This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. A very good morning and good evening, guys. Welcome to the Python demo. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity. So let me introduce myself. I'm Suresh, uh, your trainer for uh, Python. Um, you know, I have a total of uh, nine plus years of experience into IT industry, where I have been working as a data engineer, you know, dealing with uh, all the big data related uh, problems and uh, solutioning. Um, not just data engineering, I'm also into, you know, data analysis, like uh, reporting and, uh, you know, to some extent into data science and have been working on Python for almost uh, six years, six plus years now. And, uh, you know, training folks on uh, Python from almost four years now. So, yeah, this is a brief introduction about me, guys. So uh, I'm just waiting for everyone to join. But while others join, let me start the demo with a simple question, guys. Okay. So uh, most of you might have joined this course for uh, some reason, right? Uh, can you ping me? What is your motivation to join uh, or to take Python course? There could be multiple reasons, right? You know, maybe you are a fresher and then you want to get into a job or uh, maybe you are working on some technology and want to get into data engineering or maybe, you know, you want to learn machine learning, right? Or maybe you want to, you know, use Python for some kind of an automation. There could be multiple reasons, right? Just want to hear from you. Yeah, hi, Suresh. Good morning. This is Kaushik. Hi, Kaushik. Uh, previously, uh, I used to work uh, as a mm -hmm. So, thought of uh, switching my profile into you know, IT side. So, I was trying to get into automation, but uh, I couldn't cope up with it. So, I thought of, you mm -hmm. know, once into this demo, and if I'm impressed, like if I am capable to, you know, learn this technology, so thinking to switch my career into this because I got a bit gap into, you know, my job previously because of my, mm -hmm. some personal issues. Mm -hmm. So once after completing it, hopefully if I am capable and uh, you know, I don't know much about this Python course. So if, mm -hmm. yeah, like we and every guy say, if you are capable with this, like, so I can switch my, you know, this profile successfully. So this Got is it. the main, Got it. For a better, you know, bright future. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Yep, and I have got one more response. Working as an SRE engineer, want to use Python for automation, great. Pranita, to change technology, cool. Uh, may I know what is your current technology, Pranita? Data power, okay. Awesome. So uh, let me set up some expectations on uh, today's session, guys. So by the end of the session, you'll get to know, you know, what you are going to learn in the next couple of uh, months. Okay. And then, uh, you know, uh, you will also get to know uh, what you will be doing after this Python session. Right. And then uh, I'll be taking up uh, Q&A at, towards the end of the session. Okay. So, yep, let's get started. Okay, uh, let's try to make this session as interactive as possible, guys. Okay, that would uh, make our life really, really easy. Okay, uh, we interact more and, uh, you know, I mean, we interact more, we get more comfortable, right? So, just shoot down all your questions and then uh, try to get comfortable. And uh, I am not going to set any wrong expectations, guys. You know, what are the expectations I'm going to set today? You will get it for sure. Okay. Because I don't want uh, either you or me getting disappointed towards the end of the course. Okay. So if you think this course is right for you, then you can definitely opt for it. But if you think this is not your cup of tea or uh, this is not what you are looking for, you might take a call towards the end of this session particularly. Okay, but I'm not going to set any wrong expectations so that, you know, you and me both will be happy towards the end of the course. Okay. Now, before we actually jump into uh, Python, let's try to understand what exactly is a programming language, guys. Or even before a programming language, what is a program? You are free to use Google. I mean, the reason for asking questions is uh, just to make you interactive. So you are always free to use Google. What is a program according to you? A machine understandable language. Machine understandable language. Okay. What else? A piece of code. Piece of code. Okay. What else? Cool. So the technical definition of a program is nothing but a set of instructions given to your computer, guys. As simple as that. Okay. So you talk about uh, a computer. It's not self-intelligent. It might be capable of doing many things, but it is not self-intelligent. Okay. So it will just follow your instructions. And uh, there is a way to provide that instructions. And that is through a program. As simple as that. Okay. So a program is nothing but a set of instructions given to your computer to get your task done, right? So whatever the software you are currently using in your system, right? It could be a team software, it could be a go to meeting, or it could be your notepad, your word, whatnot. Okay. Uh, they are all beautifully covered by a UI so that you are abstracted from the code, but whatever the operation you're doing, maybe it could be saving a file or it could be opening a file or it could be editing some content in the file you are actually giving instructions to the computer in the back end. Some program is running in the back end. Okay. So a program is nothing but a set of instructions. Okay. And uh, how you gonna give it to the computer is defined by a programming language. A programming language will let you give these set of instructions to the computer. Right. So talking about programming languages, you know, we have a lot of programming languages, you know, C, C++, and then uh, we have Java, then we have Python, you know, uh, Golang, and then uh, we have C Sharp. Okay, so there are a lot of programming languages, guys, like Scala, whatnot, right? So we use different programming languages for different purposes. You know, all of them can do the same purpose, serve the same purpose. But, uh, you know, a few programming languages are predominantly used in, uh, you know, uh, a few areas. Say, for example, you talk about Python, 
python currently is the leading programming language when it comes to data engineering and uh, data science i would say data applications for developing data applications okay you talk about java java is predominantly used in uh, building web apps not just web applications but uh, you know web services web applications and a uh, few desktop applications too what not right and uh, scala scala used to be front runner when it comes to developing spark applications maybe 3 4 years ago but uh, uh, in today's world python is the most preferred one right so likewise every programming language has its own area of applications guys it doesn't mean that you know that programming language uh, doesn't support other things so for example you can develop data engineering applications using java too just that it is not used there okay for multiple reasons right and similarly you can develop web applications using python but just that you know python is not preferred there right so identifying what programming language to learn you know should be dependent on what area of uh, technology you are focusing on or what technology you want to learn right so that's how it goes guys right so a programming language is nothing but uh, a mechanism of or it's something which will uh, give you a uh, bridge to talk to computer or to pass your set of instructions right so now let's try to understand uh, uh, you know few basic definitions of a programming language uh, how many of you know that your machine can understand only zeros and ones yes no maybe yes okay so um, then whatever you are typing right you type in alphabets or uh, you use some alpha numeric characters along with some special characters so how is your uh, system or your machine is able to understand it any idea there is a component called compiler which would come into picture guys okay so this is the component which would uh, convert whatever the code you have written into the machine understandable format into the machine understandable format okay so basically any compiler would do couple of jobs first one is it would check syntax syntax check and then uh, semantics syntax and semantics check okay so once this is passed you know it will uh, convert whatever the code you have written into machine understandable format okay uh, say so for example you know what do i mean by syntax and uh, semantics check you know uh, every programming language will have its own syntax and semantics guys right say so for example you take java uh when you want to create a block of code you use curly braces when you take python you don't have curly braces defined everything in python is uh, identified by indentation indentation okay and then you define a block using colon and then uh, you talk about java or c you have semicolons in python you don't have semicolons to mark the end of the statement so backslash and character is the end of the statement or next line character is the end of the statement right so every programming language will have its own uh, syntax and semantics guys okay and that is the reason for every programming language you have its own compiler you know for c you have c compiler for c++ you have c++ compiler java java compiler python python compiler right so these are the components this compiler is the component which would do that basic check meaning it will check for syntax and semantics and if there is any issue or an error it will uh, throw an error else it will uh, convert your code into machine understandable format which will be executed later okay so again when you want to execute your code again there are couple of steps one is compilation and the uh, second one is execution so talking about compilation whatever the steps i have mentioned earlier that syntax and semantics check and converting code to machine understandable format is done and then talking about execution this is when your code will exactly gets executed okay 
now let me take a pause are we good so far uh, uh yes uh, so uh, i have a query so mm -hmm. what is the difference between scripting language and programming language scripting language is a uh, little on a lower side kishore you will not have lot of restrictions there and it's very simple uh, for building some lightweight applications scripting language could be really helpful but uh, you will not have a lot of inbuilt functions really available not just inbuilt functions you you won't even have any frameworks built using a scripting language you for example take uh, javascript you cannot just go and build a web application using javascript you might be able to build a simple basic applications but uh, you'll not be able to build a full fledged uh, web application using javascript okay so mostly the scripting languages are lightweight okay and you talk about any programming languages you know uh, again even few programming languages can be implemented in the scripting mode and also in a uh, real application uh, mode too okay so this will have a lot of uh, things so for example you talk about python python will have uh, something called as uh, you know uh, django flask they are all frameworks that are implemented uh, for i mean that can be leveraged for uh, implementing what you call uh, web applications likewise you have kinter module t k i n t e r kinter module which you can leverage for uh, creating a desktop applications right and then uh, you have lot of libraries available for uh, you know uh, running your machine learning algorithms right and then there is this pyspark framework which you can uh, use to get into distributed computing okay so these kind of frameworks or these kind of uh, flexibility is not there for a scripting language okay maybe you want to do some lightweight operations yes definitely you can go with a scripting language okay again i i am not here to give you textbook definitions guys but i am trying to put everything based on my experience so that you will understand better make sense uh sure makes sense so uh, uh one more query so for example mm. just uh we have some set of linux commands just to automate mm -hmm. a specific task so we are using mm -hmm. bash script and nowadays mm -hmm. all are saying uh so uh to create a lambda function in aws kind of thing so we can mm -hmm. use python they are saying so mm -hmm. uh, so what exactly difference using uh, a bash script and python in specific to scripting but uh, as you have mentioned right now so python uh, um, is having some add on features but we are using python as a scripting also right yes like i said programming languages can be used as a scripting uh, format too but you cannot call python as a scripting language correct yes okay so uh, say for example java doesn't support you to write any code in a scripting methodology so generally i'll tell you what so talking about this scripting methodology right we call it as uh, repl mode r e p l okay so meaning of this repl mode is read evaluate and uh, print loop read evaluate print loop okay so you know the acronym might sound little complex but to give you a simple explanation of what it is you write one line of code check the output write second line of code check the output third line of code check the output kind of an implementation and generally people refer this kind of an implementation to the scripting uh, methodology say for example you know you don't need to define a proper function you don't need to define a proper class you don't need to do anything just go and write code in a top down approach one step after the other uh, towards your end goal and then execute it okay now if, that is what people are referring to scripting methodology uh, you don't have that luxury when it comes to java but python and scala can definitely provide you that luxury even golang okay now coming back to your question uh, unix script versus uh, python there are uh, multiple things which we will consider into picture your unix unix script you will not be able to execute it elsewhere except for that unix box or the unix platform but whereas uh, what are the python script you are writing is extensible i mean you write a python code in windows you will be able to execute it in uh, 
linux you write a python code in linux you will be able to execute the same in uh, windows 2 okay not just that scalability also you know um say for example you're talking about this lambda function right um if i'm not wrong lambda function i have never worked on aws but i'm just trying to compare with what we have in azure and uh, gcp in gcp we have something called as a cloud runner and cloud scheduler and uh, in azure we have azure functions okay so basically these things are especially used to uh, deploy your code and run your code basically it provides vm to run your code okay so uh, definitely it is making it has a platform independent thing that is what i could anticipate you know when you are comparing lambda aws lambda implementing a python code in aws lambda versus uh, unix shell scripting makes sense okay and say for example, uh, lambda will now be recorded sorry guys i'm not sure what's happening okay yeah now if talking about implementing this python script in aws lambda right you, the same python script you can uh, definitely deploy it in azure and also uh, in gcp with uh, minimal or no changes depending on how you write the code how modular your code is i would say how modular and parameterized your code is okay hope it makes sense to everyone i know some of you are beginners and it might sound like french and latin but that's okay you are here to learn okay now moving on python have its own uh, advantages guys i mean definitely it has its own disadvantages too uh, again but the advantages you get will always overshadow the disadvantages of python okay now first things first um we will talk about different types of programming languages we have okay uh, one is uh, you know procedural versus object oriented okay even before this i want to talk about uh, you know, high level versus low level programming languages and then we have compiled versus interpreted programming languages so these are the three uh classifications which you need to understand let's start with the first one high level versus low level programming languages any idea guys what exactly is the difference between high level and low level programming languages no idea okay so uh low level programming languages are machine understandable guys so machine understandable programming languages are what we call as low level programming languages okay and uh, you know human understandable languages are what we call as uh, high level programming languages okay so for example this java c c++ golang c sharp scala everything would come under high level programming languages and talking about uh, low level programming languages you know machine level programming languages like uh, cobol would uh, come under this low level programming languages okay or uh, the chip programming language rare i just forgot the name uh this embedded systems we use some kind of a scripting there okay they all come under uh, machine learning sorry uh, machine understandable programming languages low level programming languages okay uh, maybe if you are uh, browsing there is a different direction to this definition guys basically you know they define high level and high level and low level uh, based on the libraries available so for example you have more libraries available they call it as high level programming language and if you have less libraries available they call it as a low level programming languages okay uh, the best example i can uh, give you here is uh, 
uh, see say for example you talk about a list generally a list is nothing but a data structure which will help you to store multiple values or multiple elements okay so you you take c for instance in c you don't have any library guys if you want to implement a linked list or a list okay you'll have to write you know 150 200 lines of code and when you talk about the implementation of same list in java or python or scala it's just a couple of lines of code because these lists are provided as inbuilt modules or packages okay uh, as a collections framework or a collections okay so just a couple of lines of code you will be able to do the same functionality okay so taking this parameter they have defined uh, high level and programming high level and low level programming languages in which case c c++ would uh, get into your low level programming languages and the python java would come under high level programming languages but uh, you know uh, for me i don't want to go with this approach because the standard definition of high level and low level is based on understandability okay so machine understandable languages are low level and human understandable languages are high level so whatever the high level code you are writing using java or python or whatever it is will be converted to machine understandable or low level by your compilers okay so the second definition i still discussed because when you are going through some blogs in the internet i don't want you to get confused you might be seeing that direction as well but uh, you know this is what it is okay now the second uh, classification is on uh, procedural versus object oriented guys okay now talking about procedural and object oriented this is an interesting uh, classification okay i'll try my best to uh, make you understand this but uh, you know you will be able to better correlate when we actually talk about object oriented programming structures concept in python okay so talking about procedural versus object oriented procedural is a top down approach methodology meaning you have an input and you know what your output is or what you want to achieve and then you start with your input write step by step implementation and then you know finally arrive at the output okay so that's what we call as top down approach right and talking about here there are no classes there are no objects nothing okay and now talking about uh, object oriented uh, programming structure right this is a bottom up approach meaning firstly you will have to do a lot of analysis on understanding what a class is what an object is likewise let me try to explain with a real time example guys okay so a class and an object these two will play an important role uh, for understanding uh, you know what exactly a class and what exactly an object is okay so class will have a class will sorry a class will have you no know, some properties and uh, methods or functions right and then object is nothing but an instance of a class instance of a class i know it sounds like a french and latin for you but let me take an example in my uh, system i have a notepad and then or a word ms word and then i open another ms word okay a word document and i open another ms word document and then i open fourth ms word document now let me ask you a question in order to open four microsoft office uh, word documents do i need to install ms office four times or uh, installing it once will do installing it once will, will do as simple as that so basically that is where your object oriented programming structure will come into picture guys okay so let's say your ms office is a class or uh, word document is a class class let's say ms word i'm just making it up okay and then uh, maybe it will have some parameters or properties like you know the name of this file and then uh, you know uh, what else it can have the location where it is stored stored so on and so forth and then talking about functions it will also have some functions like save right and then uh, edit okay and then find 
okay maybe find and replace find and replace okay and then maybe save as likewise okay now if i'm defining an ms class word right and then let's say the four word documents which you have opened okay maybe document one is equals to is equals to ms word of let's say the document name is uh, maybe python python dot doc and uh, location is maybe desktop okay and then uh, python one dot doc okay so this is how you can uh, create objects guys this is how your ms office software will create objects you open four files it will create four different objects for four files it's the same class which is installed but whenever you are using it it will create four different objects and each object will have the same properties name location and they can perform the same operations so for example it's not that you can uh, save one file and you cannot save another file because since all these uh, documents whatever you have opened are objects to the same class you will be able to perform the same operations you can perform save you can perform edit you can perform find you can perform find and replace save as whatnot okay so this is the beauty of a class and an object okay you create one class with all the properties and all the functionalities it can uh, perform and then you can reuse this for multiple objects okay let me take a pause are we good so far yes awesome yeah. and then finally we have uh, compiled and interpreted programming languages guys so talking about uh, compiled versus interpreted you know compiled programming language uh, have less flexibility in terms of uh, development or uh, the control on the programming there is a reason uh, why i'm telling you this uh, you know in compiled programming language you'll have to write your entire code and then uh, submit it for uh, execution okay and then compilation will be done first and then execution right so you'll have to write the entire code and then compiler will come into picture which will compile your entire code check for any syntax or semantic errors if there are nothing then it will uh, move to the next step which is execution and talking about interpreted it has a slightly different way of doing things again uh, from tomorrow when we start python we will deep dive into what interpreted programming language is but at this point in time for your understanding it will give you a flexibility of executing one line at a time guys basically your syntax and syntax and semantics check and execution will happen one line at a time not for the entire code okay i mean you can do it it all depends on uh, how you want to do it and uh, compiled programming languages can never be written in repl mode or implemented in repl mode whereas interpreted programming languages can be okay so for example you take java you can never write java in uh, repl mode because uh, everything you write in java has to be in a class okay whereas python scala they have a different approach you write one line of code check what that is doing second line of code check what it is doing third line of code check what it is doing so on and so forth okay so that way you will have more control on your code you will you will get to know if you are writing your code in the right direction or not that's the advantage you get by using uh, interpreted programming languages guys okay so python is an interpreted programming language now talking about these classifications right first classification your python would fall into uh, high level programming language and then uh, here it is an object oriented programming language procedural versus object oriented python is object oriented programming language and then compiled versus interpreted Pro python is an interpreted programming language okay now let me take a pause are we good so far yes yes okay so do you know who invented python guys
Yes, guide of one Rasun. I'm a huge fan of this guy. Okay, maybe you should be watching some interview in uh, YouTube from this guy, and uh, maybe you will start appreciating why I really love this guy. Okay, so he is the one who invented uh, Python. I would say this is a game changer, guys. Python is a game changer, especially in the data field. Okay, so if you are really aspiring to become a data engineer or a data scientist, there is no better programming language than Python for you to get started. Okay, especially in uh, today's world, right? So he is the one who invented this. Now, uh, let me walk you through the course. Just give me a second. So I have divided the entire course into modules, guys. Um, you know, we'll start with module one. In this module, we will get to learn all the basic concepts like Python features, and then uh, you know, uh, we'll try to understand. Uh, yes. So here is another interesting fact from one of our participant. Python name also he have taken it from comedy series which he likes. Monty Python's Flying Circus. I mean, this programming language, as how they are named, is uh, quite funny. You know, uh, Java. Java is a favorite dish of uh, James Gosling, who invented Java. Okay, uh, I, I'm not sure how C, C++ were coined, but uh, Python and Java are uh, named this way. Okay, yeah, now coming back to the course content in module one, we'll be talking about all the basic concepts, uh, which is common across all the programming languages, guys. Okay, you will get to learn about conditional statements like if, if else, nested if else, and then we have uh, loops, for loop, while loop, and then do while loop is not supported in Python. Uh, we'll talk about control statements, we'll talk about uh, uh, string functions, we'll talk about file operations, we'll talk about exception handling. Okay. So what not? We'll talk about uh, everything there. I mean, the detailed course content, you can get it from Careerity folks. Okay. But uh, this is all about the basic programming concepts. And then module two is about object-oriented programming structures. Okay. So basic Python concepts. And the module two is object-oriented programming structures. So in this object-oriented programming structures, you will get to understand uh, how we define a class, how do we, how we define an object, what is this self keyword, and then uh, you know we talk about constructor, we talk about uh, uh, inheritance, we'll talk about different types of methods we have, like static method, instance method, and then uh, class method, right? And then we'll talk about diamond problem, we'll talk about abstract classes, whatnot. Okay. And uh, module three is about Python JDBC or you know Python database connectors, Python DB connectors. I'm not sure how many of you are having some kind of an exposure to. <laughs> Sorry, how many of you have uh, some kind of an exposure to databases? But in module three, I'm gonna walk you through how you can do CRUD operations using Python in a table. I'm going to introduce what an RDBMS is, how you create a table, how you read data from a table, how you update it, how you delete it. CRUD stands for create, read, update, and delete. We will be doing all these operations uh, in a database directly. Okay, once you understood what these operations are, then I'm going to show you how you can do the same operations using Python code. Okay, and then module four is about uh, Python for data science guys. So here I'm gonna walk you through NumPy and uh, Pandas. Okay, again, uh, don't expect me to teach everything in uh, NumPy and Pandas because you know if I have to teach uh, you know comprehensive fashion NumPy and Pandas, 
it would take a couple of months just to cover whatever is available in numpy and pandas okay but you will get a good understanding on how this can be used numpy pandas in fact i would be covering uh, you know a couple of uh, plot diagrams as well using matplotlib and seaborn okay but uh, yes you will get a fair idea on how this numpy and pandas can be used right and then uh, you know i believe in injecting the subject using some basic examples and then you know uh, getting into the complex things and that's the approach which we follow and we will have workshops okay so for example in module every module you will have a workshop guys so module 1 we will have a workshop where we will implement some games okay and then i mean using whatever the concepts we have learned and then uh, in module 2 we have a call center payment system automation system call center payment automation system we will implement that system using object oriented programming structures and then uh, module 3 we have uh, we don't have any workshop there and in module 4 again we'll have couple of workshops so once we are done with uh, numpy i'm going to show you how to edit an image using uh, numpy module Okay, so basically we'll create a simple photo editor, your own photo editor, where you can crop the image, you can rotate the image, you can, uh, you know, tilt the image, and then you can play around with RGB components. Okay, so that we will do. And uh, during Pandas, we will take our uh, Titanic data set and we'll do some kind of an exploratory analytics with some beautiful graphs. Okay, so workshops are a part and parcel of our course. And... Uh, you know every module we have them and a few of the sessions will be hands-on sessions guys so i don't believe in monotonous teaching okay at least uh, you know once we are done with few topics i'll have dedicated sessions for hands-on where you will be joining using your laptops you will use your uh, environment to write the code okay now um Talking about uh, IDEs which we use or environments which we use, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna show you Python terminal, how you run it in a raw and rustic way. And then I'm gonna show you Collab Notebook. We will start with Collab Notebook. Okay, so this Collab Notebook is, uh, uh, the name itself is indicating, it's a notebook way of implementing Python code. Okay, mostly in an interpreted uh, fashion, right? So, this is the approach which people follow in uh, data engineering and data science applications developing data engineering and data science applications okay so this is a free tool provided by google all you just need to have is a google account gmail account and uh, thirdly i'll be showing you pycharm ide so because i wanted to touch an ide environment as well i can give you options too if you want pycharm i can show you pycharm if you want VS Code, I can show you VS Code, Visual Studio Code. And if you want IntelliJ, I can show you how you can use IntelliJ as well. Okay. So anything is fine. You know, you learn how to use one IDE and uh, you can replicate the same for other IDEs too. Okay. So let me take a pause here and open the floor for questions. You might ask me, boss, uh, you are not covering any modules on automation. You are not covering any modules or web application. Um, definitely not, guys. Okay. Because if I have to cover all of them, this course will become a four-month long course. And I also want you to understand whenever you want to switch a technology, it's a journey. It's not a crash course. Okay. So with this course, you will have end-to-end -end understanding on what Python is. And without this, you can't get into those things. So, for example, you want to learn some modules related to automation without knowing this Python or this object-oriented concepts or, uh, you know, DB connectors, you will not be able to go and do anything there. Or maybe you want to learn uh, Django or Flask applications without knowing what are the modules I'm showing. At least module 1 and module 2, you will not be able to do anything there. Okay. So, I'm giving you wings to fly with whatever technology you want to get into. Say, for example, after completing module one and module two, you will be in a position to go and learn PySpark. If you want to become a data engineer, you will be in a position to go and learn uh, machine learning. 
okay ai machine learning whatever the name you want to call it as data science you will be in a position to do that or maybe you want to learn web application yes you will be in a position to do that automation yes you will be in a position to do that okay after this course either you can go for another course or maybe you can go for recorded courses in udemy too because by then you will be having solid understanding on uh, python and uh, you know all you just need to do is learning those frameworks to implement using python okay now let me open the floor for uh, q and a guys any questions no questions so what are the career opportunities apart from data engineering data science and automation when you learn python and implement it in the it perspective uh your experience and background ravi uh, i'm into application performance monitoring tools i use mm -hmm. those tools like extra hop and catchpoint okay so i'm trying to you know shift gear with my career to choose any other mm -hmm. like like into aws right for example mm -hmm. so if you look in the opportunities in aws or any other job you take outside in it so python is a must no matter what if it is related to the job description or not so python is a must mm -hmm. so i'm curious to know apart from the data science and data engineering where an automation where can it python be applied okay let me answer this question so where python can be applied python can be applied everywhere everywhere literally okay and uh, i have also seen instances where the requirement is on scala but if you know python they'll still take you okay the only reason is uh, for me scaling up from one programming language to other programming language is really really easy i started my career as a java developer i mean not a typical java developer i was using java to develop map reduce applications so back then it was called as hadoop so i was developing uh, map reduce applications using java map reduce doesn't support any other programming languages and then when uh, spark came into picture you know i have to move from uh, java to scala because uh, scala and java are the only two supported uh, programming languages to develop uh, spark applications okay and then when this python or pyspark started that is when i have started uh, python okay if you ask me how much effort i have put into move from one language to other language or scale from one language to other programming language i would say very minimal because according to me yes there will be definitely 25 to 30% uh, differences but rest of the 70% conceptually they are all same you talk about for loop you talk about while loop are you talk about control statements or the definition of a class object constructor methods inheritance what not they are all same across all the programming languages just that syntaxes are different and google is always there to help you out with the syntax as simple as that okay so one reason for asking python in anything is this because most of the people believe if you know python you will be able to scale up on the other things okay and uh, talking about where python can be used like i was mentioning you take web applications okay java is the preferred programming language there meaning it doesn't mean that nobody is using python python is also being used there but you talk about uh, dominance java has that in that particular area okay and when i talk about data engineering and data science python has pure dominance i would say 99% of the applications are built using python okay so other career opportunities you will definitely have career opportunities in other things as well but uh, less compared to other programming languages like i said you want to get into web development if python have 10% opportunities rest 90% is uh, for java okay same thing for automation same thing for uh, you know whatever this is and again you talk about aws azure and uh, gcp right uh i don't see i mean i see them as a generic terms i wanted uh, people to be specific 
because Azure is having more than uh, 200, 300 services. Likewise, AWS, likewise for GCP as well. Okay, so what services you want to master? What is your area? Are you into DevOps? Are you into automation? Are you into data engineering? Are you into web development? Are you into application development? Okay, because what are the services you have in these clouds, right? Uh, you can categorize them. Say, for example, you take Azure. Maybe you want to get into DevOps side of the Azure. You have Azure DevOps, right? And then uh, you want to get into data engineering side of the Azure. You have uh, ADLS, you have Databricks, you have Data Factory, you have Synapse, Cosmos DB, SQL, Azure SQL, okay, Azure Event Hub, Azure Streaming Analytics, Azure IoT Hub, likewise. And then you want to get into machine learning. Azure ML is a different uh, beast altogether. Okay, so again, uh, uh, this is to everyone. I mean, Ravi have asked a very good question, which is letting me throw some light on uh, what this is all about. Okay, so whenever you want to get into a cloud, you have to be specific what cloud services you want to learn. Okay, and again, there is uh, something else called as administration, Azure administration or AWS administration and then other administration. And there is there are services for governance. Okay, so it's it's huge guys. Okay, the reason for asking Python as a mandatory whether you use it or not. I'll tell you what, even though we are not using Python in some of the projects which are predominantly run by SQL, we still have Python in the job description and we'll still check for Python. The only reason is client is not permanent project is not permanent. So tomorrow if somebody have to move into another project, we would expect that flexibility. And also my experience with these cloud so far, AWS I haven't used much, but Azure and GCP I'm an SME for uh, data services at least. Okay, so uh, everything is related. So for example, you have BigQuery in GCP and then you have Synapse Analytics in uh, Azure. And for me, both are data warehouses. It doesn't really matter whether I know Synapse or whether I know BigQuery. I have any exposure to data warehouse. I'll, I, I can, I can uh, still go and operate on these two tools. Okay. So for example, uh, if you know Spark or PySpark, you can still use Databricks or Dataproc in GCP. Okay. So likewise, these names and uh, the way they operate could be a little different, but the operations you do or the code you built or the solutions you built will be on a similar lines guys. Okay, so you learn data services in one cloud. Again, the same thing applies. Uh, learning the same services or a similar services in other clouds is not a big deal. You just need to understand uh, ifs and buts of that particular cloud. Okay, so long answer short. Predominantly Python is used in data science and data applications. I would say data applications. It could be data engineering, data analytics, or whatever it is. And also in automation area, these are the two areas where Python is used predominantly. And in other areas, Python is still used, but not the front runner. Make sense, Ravi? Got it. Got it. Yeah. Thank you, Suresh. Thanks for the detailed uh, explanation. No worries. Any other questions, guys? Hope this question must have answered a lot of questions, a lot of other questions. So we'll wait for a couple of minutes. If you don't have any questions, we can wrap this up. And okay. one more question, right? So how long is this course going to be? And uh, good. Yeah. it's going to be 40 hours. So two months. I would say generally 35 to 40 hours, 40 hours being the maximum. Okay. It all depends on how many questions you ask in every session. I mean, okay. when I say you, every one of you. Okay, if we go as per schedule, it is 35 hours, guys. But I will always have that five hour buffer. What are the timings? Uh, maybe this question has to be answered by career IT folks. Your start date, I mean, course start date, course timings. We You will get those details from course fee. All these details will be uh, shared by career IT POC. So is it Monday okay. to Friday or even Saturdays and Sundays are included in this course timings? No, yeah. Monday to Friday itself is, uh, you know, 
hectic and uh, i am not someone who believes in uh, you know screwing things up on sunday and saturday <laughs> it's going to be overwhelming ravi for sure you know attending sessions from monday to friday yeah. I and mean, that to for working want... professionals will yeah, be very but... difficult yeah, yeah but i don't want to i mean i don't want to make it on saturday sunday that's what i was asking no no it won't be there so generally it all depends on uh, uh, our target audience so for example this is a mix of us audience and indian audience right so if we have indian audience predominant batch then uh, we will be doing it from monday to friday if we have uh, us audience dominant batch then we will do it from tuesday morning to saturday morning just to make sure you know they are attending from monday to friday okay cool once again thank you guys thank you so much for your time okay hope you all enjoyed the demo and at least got some insights into different things we'll see you in our first session hopefully thank you thank you good day thank you, thank you. and enjoy your weekend you too thank you bye thank you thank you suresh bye thank you bye, bye everyone <clears throat>